everybody, welcome back to the Time Pass Podcast. This is your host, Ashika. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. Um, real quick, if you haven't done so already, please like me on Facebook at Time Pass Podcast. Follow me on Instagram at Time Pass underscore podcast. And um, check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, like it. You can find the link to that on my website, timepasspodcast.com, or the link in my bio on my Instagram. And um, make sure that you are also subscribed or following the podcast on your listening platform of choice, whether it's Spotify, iPodcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, wherever you're listening to the show, please make sure that you are subscribed or following the show as well. It really helps me out, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, you guys, I got something a little different. I got something a little different um, for the next two weeks here. It's a two-part, a two-parter, sort of like a two-part series. Um, today, I want to talk about how to get over it. We've all been through breakups, and they're hard, right? And how we handle them is actually a big part of who we become It's a big deal, right? Because each relationship that we have changes us. Um, Some for the better, some for the worse. You learn from it, you grow from it, whatever it is. But when you're there and you're actually going through it, it's kind of hard, right? It's kind of hard to figure out how are you going to deal with it. So I just kind of want to talk about my breakup experience a little bit, some of the do's and don'ts of how I personally have handled breakups and failed connections and situations and relationships. And I mean, (laughs) I'm not perfect. You know, there's a lot of years um, where maybe I engaged in some toxic habits, some things that you're really not supposed to do (laughs) in order to get, uh, get over someone. So let's let's dive into this. I, I, as I mentioned, there's going to be healthy and non-healthy ways to deal with a breakup. I would have to say I'm going to start with the unhealthy. Um, me personally, I'm a drinker. Like I'm a social drinker. I like to have a drink when I have a hard day. I come home from work. I like to have a drink, uh, a glass of wine or a glass of bourbon. I'm a whiskey girl. I like my bourbon. Um, so that said, because I am a social drinker and I actually, you know, I, I've mentioned it previously. If you don't know, I, I used to bartend. I bartended for three years. So one of my hobbies is out also to make craft cocktails. I tend to come up with, um, crazy, unique craft cocktails for friends, events, um, parties, birthday parties, holidays, just on a board Sunday when I'm at home. It's something that I actually enjoy doing. I've got two different bars in this house. You got a little wine bar, then I got an actual bar. I mean, I'm a drinker. I, I like to have a cocktail every now and then. That's that's not gonna change out of me at this point in time. However, I'm a responsible drinker. You know, I like to Uber. I do things like that. I don't really put myself out there. And I've got some good friends, so when I drink, I um, always got a place to stay or something like that. So I'm not putting myself in harm's way. However, when you're, when I'm, when I'm dealing with something heavy in my life is when I tend to, I need a drink. Long day, I need a drink. Break up, I definitely need a drink. I usually like to have <laughs> like one day where I'm just going to drink about it. And, and that's how I deal with things. And that's, and that's, you know, it's just what I need to help find that release, to help go through the emotions, to think about what I'm doing. Is it the healthiest? No. But am I doing it to excess? Am I doing it day after day after day after day? No. You know, but it's like that one thing. It's my it's my ritual of how I cope with things. I drink about it. Um, and a lot of folks out there do, right? If, when we have a hard day, it's like, hey, man, we got to go to the bar. Let's go grab a drink. And that, and <laughs> honestly, I have friends that will be like, they'll call me up if they're having a bad day or they'll show up at my door because they know that they can come here and they can drink about it and I'll always be down and 
I'll, um, I like to think I give good advice too, so that's probably also why they come. But um, it's just something that is, is very much part of who I am, you know, is, is I'm, I'm a good advice giver and um, I like it, you know, I like to go out and grab a drink, I like to check out the newest bar, I like to check out the newest cocktail, I'm, I'm, it's kind of a part of uh, a hobby and then also just how I like to unwind, so when I'm stressed, it becomes a way that I kind of help de-stress and deal with those situations. Like I said, probably not the healthiest, but it is part of me and who I am and I make no apologies for who I am as a person. Um, now this one, again, it's more of the unhealthy ways and I, and I have to confess here, I have given this advice to friends and for years, okay, for years I have given this advice and part of me knows that the efficacy of this piece of advice it's probably about 50-50 and it's got a lot of holes in it and it's not good, but I am a proponent of the best way to get over someone is to get under someone else. Now, I don't mean literally, but it's like that distraction, right? You start dating someone else, they take your mind off of it, and it's really a 50-50 because the thing is, is you're not really dealing with your shit when you do that. You've just kind of locked it away and moved on to someone else and that shit is going to creep out of whatever locker you've locked it in and affect this relationship. But I have seen it be successful for people as well, myself included. I, I have gotten over somebody because I got into another situation with somebody else. So I think it really depends situation to situation. Um, if you find somebody and they're like, amazing and you develop real feelings for them, yeah, that can help you get over this loser that you broke up with, male or female, doesn't matter, uh, they're still a loser because they broke up with you, obvi, um, but, you know, it, it can actually work. Now, most of the times what ends up happening, and I've had it work with myself both ways, where I've actually gotten over somebody by entertaining somebody else, and then I've, <laughs> I've actually entertain someone else and have it bite me in the ass because it was too soon and I hadn't gotten over my stuff and all of my baggage I wrongfully unloaded onto this person in, in one heated argument. Uh, but that'll be for part two, part two of this episode. Uh, anyway, I think it can work. It's not the best advice. And what ends up happening is when we don't deal with the breakup and the issues and trying to figure out what went wrong and trying to grow from it and all that jazz, when we don't deal with that stuff, then we bring it on to the next relationship. Um, I'd say last year, you know, I got out of a, some, a connection, I'm going to call it, because I can't even call it anything else. I, I got out of a connection and somebody new came into my life and um, they were wonderful and great, but... I wasn't over all the drama that had happened in this failed connection. I wasn't over the hurt that it caused me. I was still confused about it. I still had feelings for that person a little bit. And me being older now, I recognized that it wasn't fair to this new person who was in my life. And eventually I ended up letting that person go because what I saw happening was my reason, my reasonability, right? My, my reason. I didn't have sound reason anymore. So if this person who was so nice to me and so sweet um, had an issue and they, had a, they couldn't follow through on plans or they couldn't communicate with me for a certain amount of time or weren't communicating with me for a certain amount of time, shit would hit the fan. Like, I had no patience for it. If he had a valid reason or an excuse, whatever it was, I didn't care. And the reason I didn't care was because it wasn't him that I was hurt by or his actions. It was what this other person did and how when he portrayed those behaviors that this person was just kind of showing, how it hurt me. And it was now, well, no, I'm punishing you for something that this person did. And I recognize that. You know, I'm older now, I recognize that it was unfair, I recognize 
that I still had some healing to do. And I cut ties with that person, unfortunately. And he's a wonderful guy, um, but it just wasn't good for anybody. So it's, it's that piece of advice is not, not healthy because majority of the time you get with somebody and then you end up messing them up, right? How hard is it to walk away from somebody who's treating you so well? It's really hard. I'm telling you right now, it's really hard hard. So when you don't deal with your baggage and you get into that relationship with that person, what ends up happening is you end up punishing that person. You end up getting into fights with that person. Um, you end up, if you do break up with that person, now you're left with all this baggage from two different relationships to sort through. And so that's why I think as lucky and how it can work out for some people, you know, getting over somebody else, uh, get under someone else, I don't think it's actually healthy. Uh, will I stop giving that piece of advice? I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't know. Because it's like a 50-50 chance, right? Like, sometimes you need a distraction. It's not good, but like, deal with your shit while you do the distraction. I don't know. It could be my toxic side coming out. But I have given that piece of advice out so many times, I'm not ready to part with it yet because I have seen it be successful even for myself. I've also seen it be detrimental even for myself. So I'm 50-50 with that piece of advice. Um, I don't know about it. If anybody has any thoughts on that piece of advice, feel free to shoot me a DM. Write in an email, man. I keep asking you guys. I know you're listening. I see the numbers. Write in an email. Let me know your thoughts. Um, am, I, am I being a total toxica right now? Let me know. Let me know. Let's get, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the more positive ways of dealing with things. And this is kind of how I've been dealing with recent um, breakups and hurts and traumas that I have. And it's funny because I feel like a good portion of my 20s, I didn't deal with a lot of the shit that happened during my 20s. And I find myself still dealing with that baggage today. It's really interesting, I have to say. I don't know if... I mean, I digress, but I don't know if those hurts ever really go away 100%. But anyway, I'm going to move on. I would say the biggest way, healthy way, is to focus on yourself. You put I, let me say I, okay, I take that back. I put so much time and energy into the person that I'm seeing, the person I'm in the relationship with, situationship, dating, whatever it is. We put so much time in it, and I say we because I feel like a lot of people do it. Um, we put so much time and energy into this person and when we break up with them, we have nowhere for that energy to go. So we just obsess about this person. Instead, obsess about yourself. Do things for yourself. Focus on you. Start working out. Um, look at your own mental health. What is it that you like to do? Focus on you. Focus on your habits. Don't focus on the other person. Focus on yourself. Whether, sometimes it could be as simple as like cleaning up your environment around you, like your home, your apartment, your room, your car, whatever it is, clear it out, declutter your mind, declutter your space. Focusing on yourself is a really good way for you to get over someone. Write down some goals, write down dreams that you have for yourself, whatever it is, focus on what you want. Don't focus so much on why that relationship ended, but maybe focus on what you want. Even if it's focusing on what you want for a new partner, focus on you. Instead of focusing on the situation in that person, turn it back around and look inwards. Another thing, and I have done this time and time and time again, do the things that you love to do. Travel is huge with me. I use travel to get away from stress, to get away from breakups, to just explore because I love traveling. Um, so find the things that you love to do and do those things. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It'll go far for you because you're you're doing something that you love doing. And when you're sometimes in a relationship, you do so you compromise a lot and do a lot of things that the other person likes doing. Take it back. Be selfish. Do what you love doing. You don't have that other person to worry about. Do the things. Maybe that person didn't like to go watch chick flicks. Have a binge day on your couch and watch chick flicks all day. 
I don't know. Whatever it is that you love doing, do it. Don't wait and just do it. Um, go to your favorite restaurants and bars. Go to your favorite places. I I know, I did an episode on it, on um, traveling alone. It was an earlier episode. It was called Those Who Wander. Take a listen to that. I'm a big proponent of doing things on my own. Sometimes you don't want company. So if you're comfortable enough with yourself to do things alone, do it. I like to go to my favorite happy hour. I like to go to my favorite restaurant. I like to go to my favorite park. I usually like to go by a body of water. Um, I, I don't have any water. I do have water in my chart actually. Um, but I, I am fascinated by water and it tends to calm me. So I like to go to lakes, rivers, oceans, wherever I can. Um, another thing that you may love to do, spend time with people who love you. Spend time with family and friends. Um, it, they'll help you get your mind off of it. You can also use them for free therapy and talk to them about things. So do the things that you love doing. It'll help you get over whatever you're thinking about. Take up a hobby. Read, write, do art, paint something, uh, learn how to make pottery, go to one of those wine and paint nights. Either if you have a, if you have a hobby, focus on that, or if you don't have an, if you, if you don't have a hobby, get one. Me personally, and, and my friends know this, I have loved reading since I was a child. I remember um, I would get, uh, I, I got like, I have trophies upstairs from reading so much in elementary school, but uh, because I put in so many hours of reading. But I remember I'm the kind of person that when I start a book, I can get lost in it and not eat, not do anything, and just read that book until I finish it. I have no patience, and that also goes with books because I want to see what happens at the end. I like to binge read as well. And so sometimes when I need to de-stress or I need a break from what's around me, I grab a book. I grab a book and I get lost. I get sucked into that world of that novel and for a little bit amount of time, I'm, I'm kind of living in that book. And so I wanna say I, wanna say I read every day, almost every day. And I probably spend a good amount of hours a week reading. Um, I would say I read about maybe 20 hours a week. So I, I read. I'm a reader. And that's a hobby of mine. And I, when I get lost in a book, it's, how, it's just, it gives me a break. My mind's not thinking. I'm distracted. Um, I'm involved in the book. And sometimes, depending on what you're reading, it can be quite therapeutic. Um, so if you're reading novels, maybe a romance novel or something like that, you may relate to what's going on in the story and it can end up being quite therapeutic for you um, and be a way that helps you work through things. So I'm a reader. I'm also a writer. I like to journal. Um, I, I try to journal every night, but now I find that I journal only when I really, really need it. So find those little hobbies and things that you like doing. Um, something else that I like to do is chalk art, you know, um, it takes a lot of hours when I decide to redo my chalkboard with a new piece. Um, it can take sometimes at minimum two hours, at max maybe four to five hours of work. So and my chalkboard's not that big. So that's something that I like to do as well when I just want to focus and concentrate and not think about something else. I like to focus on my hobbies. I think that's a healthy way to kind of work through things and, you know, deal with things positively versus negatively. Um, another thing is we tend to forget about all the things we have because we're so focused on what we no longer have, right? We think about what we don't have and then we're no longer focused on what we do have. So I like to be grateful and be thankful about the things that I do have. I start to count my blessings. You know, what do I have? I got a job. I have an amazing daughter. I have an amazing support system with my family. They're, they're amazing. I have an amazing support system with my friends. It's amazing. And I think, I don't know, I have this theory that I think sometimes you really can't have everything. And so when I have so many positives in my life, it's hard it's hard for me to justify focusing on the one thing that's that's going bad, you know? Because it's like, you got all this going for you. You know, don't focus on that. Don't focus on the lack. 
focus on what you have. So that's what I would say, you know, don't focus on the lack, Fo focus on all the things you do have and invest time into those relationships, whether it's throwing yourself into work or a new show or, or whatever it is, you know, just distract yourself, distract yourself. Um, just distract yourself, throw yourself into work, throw yourself into a new show, throw yourself into TikTok, a tunnel, listen to music, whatever you need to do to distract yourself that is more healthy than, you know, drinking about it, um, try to do that, you know, find a way to keep yourself busy, keep your mind occupied, and just distract yourself with it. Some don'ts, some more don'ts, I guess. I should have talked about these earlier, but uh, I'm gonna add them in right now. Don't stalk your ex on social media. Don't do it. Girl, don't do it. It's, um, it's not healthy. You can get triggered. Speaking from experience here, you can get triggered. You can, it's a slippery slope. Please don't go down it. If you have, I tend to struggle with this, but um, if you have enough willpower, unfollow them, block them. It'll be better for you. Um, another thing, don't go through old text message threads. Don't reread them. Don't look at the pictures. Don't laugh at the jokes. Don't look at the bullshit. Don't think about that stuff. Don't drag yourself through that. It, basically, all you're doing when you do that is you're dragging yourself through the entire timeline of your relationship all over again. You feel the highs and you feel the lows and then you feel that ultimate low when you're done and you get to the bottom of the thread. Don't reread the text messages. Take it a step further. Delete the text message thread. Delete the phone number. I'm going to say it again. Delete that text message thread and delete the phone number. I actually am able to do that. It's one of the first things I do when a connection doesn't work out is I delete the text thread and I delete the number because I want to take that temptation away of me trying to fall back into texting them or, or, or doing anything like that or reminiscing. And that's the next one. Don't reminisce. When we, after we break up with people, we tend to reminisce about the relationship, but we don't reminisce in a very r reality based way. We kind of wear rose-colored glasses and we only reminisce about the good stuff. And that's wrong because that wasn't the whole relationship. So my pointer would be, go ahead and reminisce, but don't reminisce about the good stuff. Reminisce about the fights. Reminisce about the things you didn't like about that person. The things that you're like, hey, I'm better off because you know what? They had a hard time communicating. I'm better off because you know what? They never introduced me to their friends or showed me respect in front of their friends. Whatever it was, reminisce and remind yourself of the things you don't like about that person. But do not sit there and remember all the things you do like about that person. You're not moving on by engaging in that behavior. Think of the negatives of the person. Don't think of the positives of that person. Not right away. Not when you're going through a breakup. Not when you're trying to get over it. Later on, years down the road, you can think, you know, that person wasn't all that bad. I learned X, Y, and Z from that person. But not when you're in the moment. Do not sit there and glorify who they are as a person. Don't do it. I don't know, you guys. Those are kind of my tips for getting over someone. I think whether you're going to do it in a healthy or unhealthy way, breakups are hard. And they really do stay with us. And they shape who we are as people moving forward and I just feel like if you can focus on yourself and realize that you are not a relationship you are you and you are whole with or without that other person so try your best not to focus on that try to focus on everything that you have in your life be grateful for it be great be grateful for the things that you bring to the table you're amazing. And a big part of me is now thinking, you know, and I say this a lot, it's like, it didn't work out with that person. You know why? That's not my person. Something better is coming. Whatever's meant for me is coming for me. And I've said that a few times on this show now, but I truly believe it. Whatever's meant for you is going to make its way towards you. It's making its way towards you right now. And there's nothing you need to do, nothing you need to do to receive that except 
be open and ready when it comes to you because if you are not let's say you're dealing with your things in a negative way and you're you know displaying toxic behaviors because you didn't really deal with all your shit when when what's intended for you and it's coming towards you you may end up rejecting it hurting it or pushing it away so it's important that we deal with our shit in healthy ways understand your shit i don't think it ever really goes away uh, not for me i mean i'm aware of my triggers i'm aware of um the things that set me off in a relationship um uh, and i really have to sit and, and ask myself you know what is it that i'm upset about right now because i don't want to behave rashly but you you need to realize those things about yourself and you need to go through that uh, when you go through a breakup to realize you know what these things are so that you don't inadvertently um reject something that's meant for you so i don't know you guys next week I've got some friends coming and we're going to talk about how to know when you actually are over it. So this week's episode was how to get over it. And I shared some of the ways that I've gotten over things, both healthy and unhealthy, because, hey, I'm real. I'm not perfect. I do things the bad way. I do things the hard way. I do things the good way. I do things the easy way. I'm a human. We're all human. I like to share my experiences with you guys. Hopefully you can learn something from it. Hopefully you got some good information about if you're going through a breakup, how you can deal with things and make you feel better. Whatever you do, if you're going through a breakup, just remember you're whole as you are. Remember you have tons of things going for you in your life. Think of those things. Write them down. It's super therapeutic. Focus on those things. Focus on the good in your life. Do not focus on the lack. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you. If you haven't done so already, please make sure that you are following me on Facebook at Time Pass Podcast. Make sure that you are following me on Instagram at Time Pass underscore podcast. Check out, click the bell icon, subscribe, like my YouTube channel. The link for that can be found on my website, timepasspodcast.com, or on the link in my bio in, on my Instagram page. Also, um, you guys, if you haven't done so already, please take a couple minutes and write me a short review on iPodcast. I want that five-star rating from you guys. Uh, and I'm going to ask again. I said it earlier. I'm going to say it again. What do you think about the tips I give? I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd really love some engagement from you guys. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. Write me an email at timepasspodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go to the website and uh, hit the contact me page and write to me that way, you guys. That's all I got for you today. Remember, whatever you're going through, you have people in your corner. You've got things going for you. You're whole as you are. Stay authentic. And I'll see you next time. Bye.